think I got my first bike when I was old. Um, I went out and broke the tire. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, my favorite superhero is probably uh, Batman. Okay, cool. Um, my name is Woodson. Woodson. I'm going to have to keep an eye on Batman and Joker over here. <laughs> Batman, all right. So Woodson, all right. Let's see. Woodson, right? All right, I need to be correcting my role, so y'all hang tight. Let me find another pen. I think I'm leaving my pens for the other teachers in their classes because some of these, like Ms. Kilter If you need one, I have an extra one here. I'm already seeing, hey, Miss done this. So. And so W O O D S O N? Okay. Yeah, they have misspelled yours. They have misspelled Kennedy. Hannah's H A N N A H? Yes. Okay. Are you okay? Still going by Eliza, Gracie, and Abby? Yep. Okay. Just checking. It's going to be way more girls than boys this year. I know this side. I know this side. Like, yeah. like, there used to be more boys and girls, and now it's like, it's like 20 more girls than boys. I think that's why it's so quiet. Oh, I know. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Great. Right. And so, Batman and Woodson. All right? All right. So, I got a king. Um, Alright, let's see. Something about your dad or grandfather or uncle? Alright, so we went hiking um, in Amagula Falls. Uh huh. And we are on like the boardwalk and stuff like that. And um, my dad, I think, like hit like a yellow jacket nest and. Oh no. And he just. Um, and like 10 of these stones. Wow. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is not a good thing. So, oh wow. I had oh a bad goodness. I had a bad story with bee. I stepped on a bee when we were out walking in the yard. Oh. It was painful, bad. Oh goodness. Mm. Yeah, it's not fun to be checked, chased by a nest or something. Yeah. So. Um. All right, let's see. Um. My favorite, like, super, or not super, um, cartoon character is uh -huh. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny, okay. In my last class, somebody liked Wiley Coyote, so <laughs> I thought that was, I'll have to introduce you to him, so. Um, my name is Kyle, and I'm 16. Kyle, okay. Nice to meet you, and it's? K-Y-L-E. K, oh, K-Y-L-E. Okay, Kyle Robbins? Okay, great. I'm trying to match up names with people. All right. Okay, great. I got the eight. I can do an eighth grade story. I got to skip a week of school to go to the beach with my friend's family. That's fun. Um, I guess my Wonder Woman? I've never seen a lot of Oh, I love Wonder Woman. Yeah. And then Olivia. Okay, Olivia. Olivia, is it Olivia Saint? Saint Aunt. Saint Aunt, okay. Great, awesome. I got a king. Okay. I guess for my dad, a few years ago, he tried to ride my brother's scooter and he flipped over something and cracked his collarbone. Oh no! <laughs> That's really painful. They can't really put that in a cast either. You just have to sit there, yeah. So, oh, well, what's your favorite superhero? I don't have one. Can't think of a cartoon character? Somebody you like? No. No? no. Okay. Well, how about just your name? I'm Elise. Elise, I'm okay. 14. Elise. Welcome, Elise. Okay, great, great. Well, and I think we have Carson, who is joining us online. So, or not actually on the camera. <laughs>
<laughs> I think he's white. Okay. So, hi, Carson. Um, okay. So, great. Well, it is so nice to meet all of you, and I'm so happy that you're here. And we're going to have a lot of um, fun together. And um, y'all, be sure I get the cards back so I can torture the next class by asking. You. <laughs> so, okay. So. Um, we have some games that we're going to get to play today and first we're going to look over our course materials hopefully everybody got the essentials and writing book and the daily grams um if you didn't bring your books it's okay if you don't have them yet it's okay but you want to get them as soon as possible um that's not but i'm glad you brought that eliza that is right so if abby will hold up the daily grams book so y'all can see that so you're not going to turn work into me from that book but that book is going to help you get really good grades on your quizzes so do the assignments in that daily gram book even though you're not turning them into me um because that's going to be the difference in making good grades on quizzes or not um, Eliza's got the Teaching the Classics books to show you. Those um, are for the last quarter. You're not going to need that book until February or March. So you can leave that one at home, just don't lose it. But you'll, you won't need that until February or March. So, and then um, you should have an Essentials in Writing book. We have this. Yes, Eliza and Abby are demonstrating those. That is the book that we're going to use the majority um, of the time for the next several months. So make sure you keep up with that. So um, that's our first thing. Next, um, real quick. Just so you know what my expectations are in the class, and this is probably a repeat for those of you who had me last year, and this is real quick and real simple, but it kind of sets the tone for our classroom. Um, I believe in showing Jesus' love in the classroom, and so, I'm not supposed to be any. Okay. Y'all be sure to yell at me if I'm about to fall over the course so we don't have that on video. Um, okay, so I want you to like to learn in the class. That's important. So sometimes you're going to be surprised that, hey, we actually are learning stuff. So um, in Proverbs 1-7, God tells us that fools don't like wisdom or instruction. And so I know all of you are really smart and you don't want to be a fool. So we're going to like to learn. We're going to learn stuff. Second, we're going to obey authority. Everybody has a boss. I have a boss. You have a boss. So we all have authority, but we have to obey. And God tells us in John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. So I answer to God, and I answer to the school, just like you all need to obey authority here at our school for the teachers. So third, I want you to value yourself. And I want you to value others. You are so valuable. And even if you're feeling like you're not, you're valuable to me. I can't be a teacher without students. And so I am so thankful that each of you are here. Don't come if you're sick. We'll, we'll <laughs> communicate online. But come when you're well, because it makes a difference. I love teaching in person far better than online. So on Psalms 139, the Bible tells us you're God's creation, you're unique and wonderfully made. And others are his creation too. So we want to show respect and care and concern to everybody. Um, and Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself in Mark 12, 31. So the last one, excellent effort. I want you to put forth excellent effort in the class. Um, Philippians 3.14, Paul describes, he tells us to do our best, don't give up, press on and win the prize. And so I want you to put forth an excellent effort in here. So that's pretty easy, just four things. The only dumb question is the one that you don't ask. So be sure that you 
Don't be afraid to ask questions. It's really important. Somebody else may be thinking the same question, and they just made me a little nervous to ask. But don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, let's see. Okay, so today we are going to go over our syllabus um, and make sure you know. Did any of you happen to look at the teacher page on GradeLink? Okay, if you didn't, it's fine. If you look at, go on GradeLink when you get home and look at the teacher page, and you'll see I've posted your copy of the syllabus on there. So it's always there all year long. They're doing less paper handout copies of stuff. And so sometimes I'll post the videos that we watched. Or, so I'll post stuff on that teacher page. So anything that you, you want to at least check that once a week, OK? If not, every day, just to be sure there's not anything urgent going on. And let's see. All right. So I'm going to let you all um, I'll tell you what. Just changing classrooms, I gotta get used to this. I'm gonna figure out how to do things faster. So you're not waiting on me. And I guess y'all got out of the toilet paper game that we were gonna play. It was a different game this year, I think, than we played last year. So. Last year was hard. That was <laughs> hard to play. It, it was hard, hard yeah. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So this is our syllabus. Hopefully y'all can see that. Hopefully the camera is showing. Um, so this class lasts the whole year. It focuses on success. Um, if you are successful in here, you're going to be ready for the first college English class for Tacoa Falls um, because this is a tier program. And so what you learned in English 8 is going to help you learn English 10 this year. If you weren't in English 8, that's OK. Um, there's still, um, if you need some extra review and stuff like that, you'll be able to get it. Um, and then, um, English 10 is the foundation course for English 113 and 123 at Dakota Falls. So, and I've taught both of those, so I've seen it from the perspective of how the program builds. And so, it, it all builds on each other. Um, we talked about meeting once a week. Um, so, we have this class competency exam coming up. In order to be able to enroll in English 113 at Tacoa Falls, you have to pass this class with an 85 or higher. And so you want to make sure that by the end of this year, you've been able to make an 85 or higher. Um, class materials, we talked about those. And my wonderful assistants over here demonstrated the books. And then you also want to have some notebook paper, maybe a three ring binder or a pocket folder or a notebook, something that you're able to keep track of your assignments in. Um, I would encourage all of you, if you have younger siblings who are going to use your books because your parents don't want to buy more copies of the same book, then make a photocopy of the assignment that you're turning in um, or write it out on a piece of paper outside the book. If not, and your parents don't mind you tearing out the page out of the book to turn in, then you can. So, and not every assignment that's on GradeLink, you're going to turn in to me. There's only certain things that it says you're supposed to turn in, okay? So the rest of it is just for your training and your learning, so then you're prepared for the quizzes and the test and things like that. Um, course grading. Um, there'll be assignments. I have to try to get everything back to you within a week. Um, grading scale is 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, 
70 to 79 as a C, and hopefully we won't have to worry about the others. Um, quizzes count 25%. Class participation is 15%. Peer review is 10%. What that means is lots of times we bring um, writing assignments in and I'll put you with a partner and you and your partner are going to peer edit each other's papers and then you get to go home and fix it before it comes to me for a grade. So you get another pair of eyes to look at it, So, which is very helpful. We did some of that last year, didn't mm -hmm. we? Peer editing. Um, class discussions, 5%. Writing assignments are 40, and then end of course exam is 20. Um, the tests and quizzes, in this class this year, there's a quiz every week. So we're not having a quiz today, but next week there'll be a quiz. Now these quizzes, the way you study is you do the daily gram work. So it'll be grammar, it'll be, it'll be things like that on the quizzes. It'll be, here's a paragraph, and identify all the grammar mistakes in this paragraph. It'll be things like that. So it's not something that you're memorizing and studying. You should be reviewing it in your daily gram assignments. Does that make sense? Any questions about the, so. And the quizzes will start off really hard because you're not used to it. And then as you move, move along throughout, the year, all of a sudden they get easier because you're like, oh, okay, I, I get it. So just study the grammar. That, um, let's see. Writing assignments, there's going to be one writing assignment per week, and then there's going to be a research paper during the third quarter. The research paper won't be until after Christmas. So you can really think, okay, good, I don't have to worry about the research paper until Christmas. <laughs> So, um, and it won't be due, like you won't, you won't have to do a bunch for it during Christmas, so don't go home and ruin Christmas already. So, um, class participation is 50, worth 15% of your grade. That's basically if you're um, peer editing, if you're doing things in the classroom and participating, that's great. Um, revision portfolio, this is the most important assignment you will have the whole year. It's called a revision portfolio. And so we're going to do different papers throughout the year. We're going to have a, um, a persuasive paper, an essay. We're going to have a um, compare and contrast essay. We're going to have a personal narrative essay. We're going to do different essays. And before you panic, those essays are usually like three to five pages. You know, they're not extensive long pages. Our papers. So, and then for your revision portfolio, which we're going to do the last quarter of the year. So you don't have to worry about that until, say, March, February, March timeframe. You're going to take all. You're going to pick four of all your essays that you've been doing and working on that I've created for you, and you're going to revise them. And that's why it's called a revision portfolio. And at the end of the revision portfolio, you'll have these this combination of essays that you've got the old version and the new version, and you'll do a letter saying, these are the changes I made and this is what I learned throughout the year about writing. And this is going to be very valuable so that if somebody wanted to take a look at your writing to get into college or, and see your skills, you can show them your revision portfolio. This is what I was able to do. So great, great um, project. Will this portfolio will it like grow over the years of art high school study? Or um, like if we do more essays in tenth grade, will we add those essays? Add another four essays to that portfolio? In other classes, or just in, in the next grade? Will we add on to that? Oh, you mean in the next? Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. No, what, what will happen though is in, in the college English classes for Tacoa Falls, you do the same project in the college classes. And if you have saved those essays, some of the classes allow you to use the work from previous English classes. 
So you may be able to use some of those essays and improve upon them and use them for your college classes. So sometimes they let you use essays you've already written. So if you invest the time now, you'll save yourself time in the college classes. But excellent question, excellent question. Um, proofreading. Proofreading is so important. And did everybody, does everybody have Grammarly on their computer? The school provides a subscription to everybody. So in Grammarly, there's a great feature. If you paste and copy your whole paper into Grammarly, you can click that plagiarize button and it'll go through the entire internet and tell you what percentage of your paper is plagiarized. And so even if you didn't mean to, if you just read something and it caused you to write it pretty much the same way, Tandem is very strict about plagiarizing, and so they want to make sure that it's your original thoughts and that you haven't plagiarized. So make sure that you run it through Grammarly and check it with the plagiarism button. So that's a great feature. Um, Grammarly will become your best friend in this class. It will help you correct your sentence structure. It will help you find commas missing. It will highlight everything for you. So make sure that you have Grammarly on the computer that you're using to write your papers. Um, proofreading is a key skill. So you've got to have access to peer reviews during class time. Ask your parents to review your writing assignments. Ask your grandparents. The more eyes that have seen your paper, the better because everybody will catch something. Or if they ask you a lot of questions, then maybe you didn't communicate clearly what you were trying to write. So older tandem students are great resources to edit papers for you. So if you've got somebody here that you know in an upper tier, ask them. Because they've been through this class, they know exactly what you're having to do. Um, you have access to the Tacoma Falls College Writing Lab once you start the college classes. So that'll, that's very, very helpful. And um, so the next thing that you see is the tutoring. Um, I think we're trying to work out on Fridays. Mr. Belcher does tutoring up in Dawsonville, and I think I'm going to be there, and we're going to tag team. So like when he's got the 10th grade or the 9th and 10th graders, I'll have maybe the 8th graders and then we'll swap. So then you could get English and math tutoring in the same location. So if you've got questions about that, just let me know. But that way, especially in the next couple of weeks, because we have these grammar evaluations. Um, it's three grammar evaluation tests that you have to take and it it gauges how, how much you know about grammar. And um, those are coming up in the next couple of weeks. So, um, and we'll take one each week. And so if you're really struggling in a certain area in grammar, come into some tutoring sessions and help you out. So, because that's all we're gonna focus on is grammar, just practicing grammar skills. Um, trying to remember you know, what's an independent clause? What's a dependent clause? Which tense do I use? You know, um, what's an antecedent? It's just going back through all the grammar rules. Um, absences and makeup work. Um, I can't stress this enough. If you're sick, don't come. So we love you, but don't come if you're sick. <laughs> and absences, if you're absent, it's okay. I'll work with you. Um, we can email, I can send you whatever you need, you can look on the teacher page and see what you missed. But it's your responsibility to contact me. I've got four classes and lots of students in different classes, and so it's your responsibility to contact me and say, oh hey, I wasn't there, I need you to send me whatever I missed, so, or help me out with this, okay? Questions about the syllabus? No? Okay. Good. All right. Well, today we're going to do a little bit of grammar review, but we're going to do it in the form of games. 
And so if you pay really close attention to these two short videos, then you are going to do better in the games. So, and I hope it's okay, but I bring candy for games. I so. have a question. Sure. For before class is over, can we play the capital the capital game that we used to, that we played last year? No, but we're gonna play a version of that. Okay, Basically. that was very fun. I know, I know. Remember, <laughs> she's talking about a capitalization game that we play in English eight, where we have two sides of the room, and yes, it's capitalized or no, it's not. And they very fun. So that was one of the fun games that we played. Okay, I believe you learn better sometimes if you play the games. All right, and hopefully the video is going to work. When people think of ice cream, oh. there are three Yes, it's just not very well. So let me figure out how to make it louder. Find ice cream sentences also have. Still not loud. Well. When people think of ice cream, there are three basic flavors that come to mind. Vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Oh. Find ice creams. Okay, I'm not a technical genius. I'm married to one, but not, I'm not. So, I don't know how to make this any louder. I think there's another, turn up all the way. I think there's a nice speaker next to it. If you go to the arrow right there next to your little pop-up box. This one? Mm -mm. No. Where? Down. Well, Down here? The, yes, that one. This one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I okay. thought I had that one all the oh, way okay. up. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's on 100. Hmm. You could just so, put subtitles on. How do I do that? The CC. The CC. The CC. Oh, okay. It's CC. English? Okay. That's crazy, though. I want y'all to hear the. Hmm. It was very loud at home. That's my family told me. The video is too loud, Mom. That's really weird. Is there a speaker on this? Looks like it. That's what it looks like a speaker right there. Let me see if I can find some other gaps or help. Mr. Bruce got his from the room this morning. They weren't fine enough. Hey, Mr. Gaskin? Oh, she's not going <laughs> this is just you That doesn't make sense. This is I'm It works fine in all the other rings. So I can't figure out. Is there a speaker on the I can hear it. projector? I can hear it here, but it's not going out here. Yeah, I've got that one on 100, and I've got this one turned up too. I'm going to try something, just because sometimes it's Goodness. It's okay. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah, that's something better. Go ahead and pause that and let's okay. pause or turn this back on and see if that'll fix it. I wouldn't worry about it, but there's two of them. I've had this happen once or twice at Rutledge, and I, when I turned it back on, it worked, so here we go. Okay.
Now there's no town. It says the volume is at zero again on that, I think. So this one right here, so is there a way to click on that? Uh, hmm. So that's so weird, it shouldn't be at zero. You didn't know you'd get to be the IT person when you take it. Apparently, I'm a little bit different. So unfortunately, I don't know how these work directly. Yeah, I'm trying to see. It says it's just. There's no like extra keys on here that I see for adjusting. Yeah, I know it works fine on the laptop, but. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if it. If I take it off of that, will it. Yeah, see, it's louder. Yeah, if you can turn the laptop on, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, and we'll figure out something for next week. Okay. I'm not sure why the projector is doing that this time. All right. Y'all are gonna get to watch it with the laptop today. Where? You supposed to? There we go. Hopefully. We'll try it that way. When people think of ice cream, there are three basic flavors that cut them off. Y'all may have to slow it just a little bit. Maybe I can hold it back. Three basic flavors. It's pretty short. Second? Here's something to keep in mind. No one likes to eat only one flavor of ice cream all the time. Basically, it's important to be able to recognize
When Jeremy arrived home from school, he did a hoodie for his dog. It starts with a dependent clause and ends with an independent. As long as it contains both kinds of clauses, it doesn't matter which one comes first. You can easily put the independent clause in front by writing, Jeremy did a hoodie for his dog when he arrived home. And we'll review a little bit of that. In playing our game. Let me change gears for a second. So just to review, so you understand what they just said before we start our game. Try not to trip over all my words. Um so a sentence or a clause has a subject and a verb, right? And there's two types of clauses. You have an independent clause and you have a dependent clause. And the difference is the independent clause has a subject plus a verb and has a complete thought. And I like to think of this to help my help me remember is that an independent clause is kind of like an adult. They, they, you know, can live on their own. A dependent clause can have a subject and a verb, but they're not going to have a complete thought. And so I kind of think of dependent clause as a child or a minor because it's somebody who can't live without an adult. And so an independent clause can live alone as a sentence, but a dependent clause can't. A dependent clause has to have an independent clause attached to it. Okay? So that's basically what they were just saying. And then there's three different kinds of sentences. There's simple, there's compound, and there's complex. A simple sentence is just an independent clause. Okay, just so you don't get confused with all the words and stuff. Independent clause, subject plus a verb. Same thing as a sentence, a simple sentence, independent clause. Compound is an independent clause plus an independent clause. Okay, compound. So I like to kind of think that as a marriage. You have two adults get married. Okay. Complex, what's the most complex relationship? Parents and kids. So a complex sentence is an independent clause plus a dependent clause. Okay? Does that help you remember? All right, and to talk about the plus sign, so a plus sign, the, the thing that's joining these together is called a subordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunction. And the most common are one of several words. And we use the abbreviation fanboys as it, so it's for, and, nor, but, or, um, yet, and so. Okay? So that's how you can remember those words. So it's going to always be 99.9% of the time, it's going to be one of those. It'll be the plus part that's joining these together. Now, can I have a compound without one of those? No. You've got to have both of them. You've got to have a subordinate conjunction. Okay. I just felt like it was important to review just a little bit before we play the games. Is it the way our time's going? Okay. okay. Now, next we're going to watch something on sentence fragments, comma splices, and run-ons. A 
I tell you what, I will also put these on the teacher page since we've had so much trouble today with technology and it, everything being loud enough. Let me turn on the closed captioning so then you can at least see that too. We usually have it, trouble with it pausing in the middle of the video, not the sound. Okay. Basically, that video is going to tell you about fragments and run-ons and comma splices. So, fragments, um, comma splices, and run-ons. So, a fragment is basically a sentence, but it's missing a subject or a verb. So it's going to be missing one of those if it's a sentence fragment. So identify the main subject, identify the main verb. If it's missing one, you've got a sentence fragment. Okay? A comma splice is when you have an independent clause, like what we talked about, and you have another independent clause, and somebody separated them with a comma instead of a subordinating conjunction. Okay? So if you've got an independent clause, which is going to have a subject and a verb and complete thought, and then you have another one, and you've stuck a comma in between the two, instead of one of our coordinate, subordinating conjunctions, then you have a comma splice. Okay? And then a run-on is when you have an independent clause and an independent clause and you may have your subordinating conjunction, but you're missing necessary punctuation. Okay? So what happens with this, have you ever had a little kid try to tell you a story and they just go on and on and on and on and on and they don't ever take a breath? Yes. And so that, they're giving you run-on sentences, aren't they? And so it's like, Oh, it, it just goes on and on, and they don't ever take a breath. Punctuation is our gift in English to take a breath. You can take a breath when there's a comma or when there's a period. You can take a breath. So there's three ways, really, to fix a run-on. So one way um, is you're just missing um, punctuation. So you're just going to put a comma before your subordinating conjunction. Um, another way would be a semicolon. You take out this, and you take out this, and you put a semicolon, okay? So think in terms of a semicolon as equaling the word and. So you could have an independent clause, and then you could have a semicolon, and then your other independent clause, okay? Or you're going to do a comma and your one of your fanboys, your subordinating conjunction. Or the other way you can fix a run-on is independent clause period 
independent clause period. You can separate them out into two separate sentences. Okay? So three ways you can fix a runoff. All right? So let's play some games real quick. Yes. Just don't forget your mask if they're requiring that in the restroom. Um, okay, let's practice a little bit. What would go in between to make sense? Make it make sense. We could put wild there, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the door It's like I blacked out. That would work. That would work. Okay, You want, to, you want to say it? Yeah. All right. Who's ready? Guys, the guys are ready. Awesome. Look. Come on, guys. Share your share your sentence. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's All see right. if it makes sense. Um, I like to run my bike. But my dog ate my food. But my dog ate my food. <laughs> The kid walked across the street and I washed the car. <laughs> well, and that's a compound sentence. That's true. It's two separate complete thoughts to make a compound, uh, I mean, to make a um, plus a subject plus a verb, independent clauses joined together by a conjunction. All right, you ladies ready? Okay, Kate ran a mile and I'm going to switch Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Good. Okay, ladies in the back? Uh, they walk to the park with the cat hates the dog. 
but the cat hates the dog. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Abby and Alyssa? The bicycle broke in the I'm sorry, the bicycle broke in the bicycle broke in the Okay. That, that one actually makes a lot of sense. That's pretty good. Okay, good, good. All right, so here's a little game that we can play. I want everybody to stand up for a second. And I'm going to go around and ask each of you a question, and you have to answer in the form of a sentence. And if you don't give me a real sentence, remember what a real sentence has to have. If you don't give me a real sentence as your answer, then you have to sit down. So, um, what time is it? Oh, wait, me? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm sorry. Just answer in the form of sentence.
If you think it's not a complex sentence, not complex, it may be simple, it may be compound, it may be a fragment, but if it's not complex, then you're going to stay seated, okay? And we'll see how we do. I'm going to read just a couple of sentences. So here's our first one. Remember, complex stand, not complex sit. Everybody's on their own. All right. I can't remember my grandmother's first name. Is that complex or not complex? I can't remember my grandmother's first name. So, four of you say it's complex. It's actually not complex. So, have a seat. It's your first deal. So, have a seat. Okay. So, next, until I get my driver's license, I will have to ride my bike everywhere. Until I get my driver's license, I will have to ride my bike everywhere. Is that complex or not complex? Are we still playing? Or, like, can we no, we're still playing. Yeah. No, you can play every single time. There is no elimination. Not, to, not the first day. I'll, I'll, I'll get tougher with the games as we go on in the weeks. So first day is just for fun. So everybody will get candy. Um, complex or not complex. The complex standards win. Very good. Good round. Okay. Next one. Everyone wanted to go swimming after we ate lunch, but my mother said we had to wait at least 30 minutes. Is that complex or not complex? Everyone wanted to go swimming after we ate lunch, but my mother said we had to wait at least 30 minutes. <laughs> it is complex. So tag yourself on the back if you put it up. Alright, how about um, the park by my house has so many soccer fields. The park by my house has so many soccer fields. Is that complex or not complex? Oh, it's not complex. I'm so proud of all of you. Good job. Okay. My uncle used to own a restaurant, so he's a good cook. My uncle oh, wait. used to own a restaurant, so he's a good cook. Is that complex or not complex? My uncle used to own a restaurant, so he's a good cook. It is not complex. Oh, wait. Anyways, um, not complex. For that. So. Um, whenever Mary goes shopping, she always spends too much. Whenever Mary goes shopping, she always spends too much. That one's actually complex. <laughs> so I hope this game has shown y'all that you need to spend some time in that daily grammar book this <laughs> week. Doing this assignment. So there are dum dums in here, Smarties, and Starburst. You're welcome to pick one of whatever you want. And I'll pass this around. Does anybody have any questions before we um, get to eat lunch? Yes, and if you'll if you make sure I get the cards back so I can torture my next class. <laughs> Thank you.